Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm currently not playing Minecraft, but instead here to show you about a pretty neat application that I just recently stumbled across. This is called MultiMC. MultiMC is currently released as version 2.3, however, uh, I have my hands on a copy version 3.0, which is uh, new and improved and has some really cool features. Uh, I had never really used this in the past, but once I got my hands on the 3.0 beta, I'm like, whoa, this thing is really awesome. I gotta do a spotlight on this to get this out there for people to check out. So uh, what it does is it allows you to have multiple instances of Minecraft, all with different sets of mods installed and different worlds and different versions, uh, makes it a lot easier for handling different instances of Minecraft and it also helps you to install mods. It makes installing uh, even jar file mods a breeze. So if you've had trouble installing mods in the past, this program's definitely for you. So uh, stay tuned for the spotlight of this application, MultiMC. It's really impressive. All right, so let's start checking out MultiMC. All you gotta do is launch the program here, and you'll note behind the scenes that it's starting to pull down a config file and a couple other files it needs off a server off the internet. You can also see some progress bars down here telling you what it's doing and how it's making out. Uh, that's all you gotta do to get this program running. There's no install required, there's nothing. You just gotta download the executable and run it. And now we're ready to start playing around with MultiMC. Uh, along the top here are the main options of the program. I'll get into each of these in turn. I'm going to start over here with the settings button. Uh, this guy, you can see, there's a couple basic settings in here. Show console when game is running, automatically close console, some standard stuff there. And uh, you've also got under the advanced tab here the options uh, for setting your memory allocation for Minecraft. Those of you aware of the batch file method of changing how much memory Minecraft is allowed to use can easily set it in here by just setting it to whatever you want for the minimum and maximum. Also, the Java path will be auto-detected the first time you run MultiMC, but if you upgrade Java or something, you might need to hit auto-detect to get the uh, latest path, but you usually won't have to worry about that. Now on to the main part of the program, MultiMC. This creates separate instances of Minecraft that you can run. All you gotta do to create a new instance is click this button here, add a new instance. Makes sense. And I'll call this the Video Spotlight Instance. Perfect. Uh, as soon as I create that, you'll see behind the scenes, instances, this folder gets created. And inside there is a folder called Video Spotlight. Cool. I'll get into some of these folders and files in a minute, but for now, all you gotta do is right click on Video Spotlight and hit play. And it'll prompt you for your username and password from Mojang. Now, if you guys are a little bit nervous about putting your username and password in here, and you might think, what if this is a keylogger or it's recording my password or something, don't worry about it. This is an open source program. You can go check out the source files and download them yourself if you want. So if you have any concerns about this key logging or, or sniffing your password or anything like that, go check out the source files. I assure you guys it's pretty safe to use. Uh, so you can go ahead and log in here. And all this is doing is passing your login and password information to the Minecraft jar when you click login. And this will now create a Minecraft folder behind the scenes. And you can see the progress bar on the bottom here. It's downloading Minecraft for you and it's going to go ahead and launch it once it's downloaded off of the Minecraft servers. So it's basically launching Minecraft for you through the interface that we just used. Ta-da! And you can see the bin and resources and saves and stats and texture packs behind the window there. So I'm going to quit out of Minecraft now and go back up. You'll see as soon as you quit Minecraft, MultiMC becomes the uh, window in the front here. So now that we've gone ahead and launched this instance of Minecraft, you can see the uh, instance folder has gotten the whole Minecraft folder ready to roll back there. Now if we wanted to, we could create a new instance, but instead of that, I'm going to show you right now how to mod your jar with MultiMC. All you got to do is right click on your instance and choose Edit Mods. A new interface opens up where you can see the Minecraft jar, the Minecraft mods, and the Minecraft resources tabs. This tab here is the Minecraft jar. Anything you place in here will automatically be inserted into your Minecraft jar. This is where you're going to put things like Mod Loader, Minecraft Forge, TMI, that kind of stuff. Minecraft slash mods is where you put your actual modded uh, zips or jar files. For example, Industrial Craft, Forestry, Build Craft, Equivalent Exchange, that kind of stuff goes in here. And finally, you've got your Minecraft slash resources. Uh, some mods require resources for sounds to work, like Equivalent Exchange, and that's where you'll put stuff for here. So let's go ahead and get our Minecraft jar ready. All you have to do is go out and download Mod Loader, 
and let's also do audio mod, Minecraft Forge, and too many items. Okay, simply drag and drop those files into your edit mods window, and you'll see that it places them right in here like so. Now you want to make sure that they're in the right order, because the order from top to bottom is the order that they get put in the jar. Typically, as you guys should know, you want to do Mod Loader, Audio Mod, and Minecraft Forge in that order, and then we'll do too many items after that. Hit OK, and then launch the game. And you'll note on the bottom here, it says installing mods and adding class files. It's modding the Minecraft jar file for you automatically. And if you look behind the scenes, there's a mods and a config folder as well. We can go ahead and create a new world. And as simply as dragging and dropping those zip files into MultiMC, it's added Mod Loader, Audio Mod, Minecraft Forge, and TMI to your jar file automatically. And we load up a new world and see that TMI is in fact installed. And the existence of the mods and config folder back here shows us that Minecraft's Mod Loader has been installed. So cool. And that's all there is to modding your Minecraft. Now let's add some mods to it. So edit mods again. Let's install Equivalent Exchange. As you guys know, Equivalent Exchange's zip file, once you extract it, has a mods folder and a resources folder there for you. Okay, so let's make this easy for you guys to see on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and get the jar file out of the Equivalent Exchange mods folder and just drop it right here into Minecraft slash mods. And then I'll go over here to the resources folder and get the resources sound files and drag them into Minecraft slash resources window and hit OK. We've just installed Equivalent Exchange. Now if we hit play, it's going to go ahead and make sure that Equivalent Exchange is in the mods folder. And I'll show you that right back here. Look in the mods folder, you can see that EE mod has been placed where it belongs. And the resources are also in place. Now if we go ahead and load up our new world, we can check in TMI and confirm that all the Equivalent Exchange items are there, showing that it has been properly installed. How cool and how easy was that? And the sound effects indicate that we're properly working. Let's save and quit. So we've just installed Mod Loader, Minecraft Forge, Audio Mod, and TMI and Equivalent Exchange in a few simple drag and drops. But let's say we wanted to remove TMI now. Just right click and hit Edit Mods, and you can highlight too many items and hit Delete. And then hit OK. Next time we launch Minecraft, it's going to go ahead and rebuild your jar file for you without TMI. So now we've got Mod Loader, Audio Mod, and Minecraft Forge, but no TMI. And if we load up our test world again, you can see no more TMI. How does it do that, you might ask? Is it downloading a new jar? No, it's not downloading a new jar. The first time you downloaded the jar, it also creates a backup file. And every time it gets modded, it can go ahead and use that backup jar, the original jar that you downloaded the first time you created this instance, to remod it. So if this is version, I don't know, 1.1, for example, and you want to rebuild your jar file, you don't have to worry about it downloading a new version of the jar. It'll work just fine in 1.1 and keep it at 1.1. And then, of course, it's just as easy to put TMI back in there. All you have to do is drag and drop the zip file. Too many items goes right in here. OK, and play. Again, rebuild your jar file for you, and too many items is once again installed. Now let's go ahead and create a new instance. You can create another one. We'll call this just vanilla. 125. Note that as soon as I did that, it creates a vanilla 125 folder back behind the scenes here. And now when I launch this guy and hit play, it's going to download another copy of Minecraft and place it directly in that vanilla 125 folder. So these are now two totally separate instances of Minecraft. They are completely separate in every way. The worlds aren't shared across the instances, and the mods are separate as well. So if I had to create a new world here, you'll see it's in fact a vanilla instance. No TMI, no mod loader, nothing like that. So I could simply play around in vanilla here, as if, or save and close out and quit. And then go back into my video spotlight world where I have equivalent exchange installed.
pretty awesome. Those of you who might play on servers or have different, you know, challenge maps like Feed the Beast or something like that might find this especially useful. Really easy to switch between which servers you're playing on or your single player worlds if you have different sets of mods required. And removing an instance is just as easy as right clicking on it and choosing delete. Okay. And that instance folder is completely gone now. Um, in your mods editing, you can also delete mods by highlighting them and hitting delete in here as well. You can also right click on it and choose view folder. This will allow you to see the folder specific to this instance of Minecraft. So it's easy to access your config files, change block IDs, and anything else you have to do within that instance of Minecraft. Some of the other cool features here, you can change the icon of your video spotlight. Uh, so you can make your uh, instances different icons, you can add icons here, you can even change the default icon. So I could make this guy TNT, or maybe even Diamond, because Equivalent Exchange is installed there after all. You can edit the notes on it. And those notes are stored on that little block there. Just a nice little feature. And finally, rebuilding the jar. Just in the event that you have a problem with your jar and you think you need to rebuild it, you can hit that button and it'll automatically rebuild your Let's try it now. There you go. Pretty simple and straightforward. This program will also automatically check for updates, something you can change in the settings menu, check for updates when MultiMC starts, and you can also click this button here to check for updates manually. So if a new version of MultiMC comes out, it'll automatically update itself for you, which is really convenient. And that's pretty much all there is to MultiMC right now. Uh, it's really made modding a lot easier and keeping separate instances of mods a breeze. Uh, it's really impressive and I'm pretty sure I'll be using this going forward all the time. I'm um, really excited about it. And uh, I'm really excited about how much easier it is to add stuff to the Minecraft jar, as you guys have seen. So uh, this pretty much wraps up MultiMC. The uh, download link is available in the description of this video, but as I said, this is version 3.0 beta. Um, it's going to be out pretty soon and available for everybody. Right now it's only version 2.3 which is available and is a little bit harder to install. Uh, MultiMC 3.0 is a lot easier to install. You've seen it all so far. One of the upcoming features that I'm excited about uh, is the ability to export config packs, kind of. Um, it won't export or you know bundle up the mods together because uh, that wouldn't be cool but it will export all your config files for you and create a list of mods required which you can then send to a friend and they can import that into their multi MC and it'll set all their block IDs for them and overwrite the config files automatically and also tell the uh, person if they're missing any mods that they need so it'll make it a lot easier for example for me to share my config files with everybody you should be able to import one file into multi MC in the future and load up those config files but like I said that's a feature that's coming soon multi MC is available for Windows right now and a Mac and Linux version are both in the works and should be available pretty soon um, so this is Direwolf20 signing off on MultiMC Beta 3.0 for Windows. It's really cool and I'm pretty excited about it. And like I said, I think I'm going to be using this program going forward. Alright everybody, 